This is Goku Sun DBZ, and welcome back for video game news for the beginning of August. So let's get with some of the headlines over the past week or so. First up, um, of course, very controversial was opinions on the Joe Rogan show, and I'll say this. For, I actually watched the full overall clip and what he said in depth. I have mixed opinions and thoughts overall when it comes to Rogan. Because the fact of the matter is, he himself is a big gamer and likes games and stuff. I see where he's coming from, but at the same time I disagree. I don't think he completely understood what he was, or rather how he was wording things. It's not the best way. But I'm not going to try to get in depth or anything on this. It's just something in headlines thought mention. Also, Ghosts of uh, Tsushima has PS4 highest score of all time with user score on Metacritic with a 9.3 out of 10. Really good. Also, uh, what if? Call of Duty delays Black Ops Cold War for Modern Warfare Year 2. And that's look like what's going on right now. I myself am not a Call of Duty fan. Never have been. But interesting for COD fans. Also, um, recently, of course, mentioned back in news headlines a little bit again about all but confirmed now officially on Disney's part possible Kingdom Hearts show coming exclusive to Disney Plus. Now there was rumors in the past a few months ago but now it's all but now being confirmed by Disney themselves. So it's gonna be interesting and apparently they're gonna have Square Enix more heavily involved on the series than strictly Disney themselves. So that should be interesting. I am glad at least uh, Square's going to be a lot more heavily involved, at least in the development of it. Uh, also, the rising tide lifting boat spending, uh, it's an article headline, spending fell 17% over the past month from what it was gaming wise since a lot more people are now going back to work and everything though things are getting uh, going back a little bit more negative so especially in bigger states but also uh, GameStop recently stated uh, versus last year year to date hardware sales have been up 25% for GameStop, so that's pretty big, while software sales were up 19% higher from this time last year. So that is good. That's going to help at least GameStop survive longer. Um, also, GameStop e-commerce grew from uh, this time last year to this time this year, specifically over a period of six weeks back, really, I think it was more between like late March into like late May. In that time period, uh, GameStop e-commerce sales grew by 519%. That's pretty impressive numbers. And that is something GameStop definitely wants to see, though. That doesn't help the brick and mortar stores, but it really did help. I think it's because six week period, most of the brick and mortar stores, a lot of them were closed. So your only choice was to go with the e commerce, their app, and with their online stuff. So it does make sense and definitely helps them at least survive longer. Um, also, Console upgrades and stuff. They're talking about things that that's something else they think that's going to help. GameStop is given this year, towards the end of the year, holiday season, 
is going to be the launch of the new Xbox and the new PS5 and everything. That should also help their growth as well. Also, uh, Mario Modder creates all new Zelda game in Ocarina of Time engine. Which I looked at some of, like the pictures and some bits of gameplay. Actually, it looks really cool. Also, Netflix announces a Witcher prequel series. Okay. Uh, also, Sonic 2 film set for April 2022. Even though it didn't do the hugest numbers, still, the Sonic movie did make around $350 million. So, I'm not surprised they announced the second movie. And I will say, personally, I enjoyed the Sonic movie, especially Jim Carrey, was the greatest part about the movie. Him and his Dr. Robotnik stole the whole movie. He, it was like classic 90s Jim Carrey over again. Just really good humor, perfect timing. I haven't had this much fun enjoyment in a Jim Carrey role in quite some time. Also, uh, Psychonauts 2 delayed to 2021. Not too surprising on that. Also, Fantasy Star Online 20th Anniversary, of course. Which is hard to believe it's 20 years old. Uh, also, Destroy All Humans. Right now, I they still on Mad Creek have not released a user score yet. As of right now, Creek's score is a 68% on the remake of Destroy All Humans. Now, I am curious eventually, I'll probably try the game once the price drops a little bit. I actually like the original Destroy All Humans game. It's a classic. All the cheese and everything. Also, um, eShop. Here's a couple of deals right now going on Nintendo eShop. Uh, Final Fantasy IX is on sale for $10.49. Uh, 10 slash 10 2 is uh, 25 dollars still a bit pricey in my opinion uh, Final Fantasy 7 is eight dollars Final Fantasy 8 remastered is ten dollars Final Fantasy 12 zodiac age it is uh, 25 dollars Final Fantasy 15 pocket edition is 15 dollars. Uh, collection of Mana is $20, and I highly recommend the Collection of Mana collection. Speaking, given, I did buy it myself back a f several months ago, and it's actually really gets more than worth the money. 20 bucks is not bad at all. Um, also, Diablo 3 Eternal Collection, $30. Uh, Lego Jurassic World is $12. Uh, Lego The Incredibles, $18. Also, we have uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, $9. Uh, moving Out, $20. Overwatch Legendary Edition, $20. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, $20. Pixel Junk, which actually looks interesting to me. Um, or Pixel Junk, whatever, 2 $3.00. Also, big announcement on PSN, Cuphead is now available for $19.99, normal price, on PSN. So, if you did not have Xbox One, or you haven't played Cuphead on the Switch, and you have PlayStation 4, get Cuphead. Seriously. Speaking of someone who has played the game... I can't recommend Cuphead enough. It's a great game. It's very difficult. That's one of the perks to it having a co-op mode. But it still is a really fun game. And it definitely is a harken back. And I love the 1930s like cartoon feel to the animation and everything. And the fact the game was actually all hand drawn is even more insane. And the game deserves all the success it's gotten. But seriously, if you have a PS4, pick Cuphead up. It's a really good game, great challenge, and just a lot of fun. Also, 
uh, a new Israel tank from the Israeli government features Xbox controller. So somehow they fix it to where you can control a tank inside the tank with an Xbox controller. Alrighty then. That's weird. Um, also PS Plus August 2020 full games. We have Ultimate Knockout 4 Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered on the Xbox side of things with Xbox Gold, Portal Knights, Override, Mech City, then Brawl. Uh, then on the P the 360 side of things with the gold, uh, MX Unleashed and Red Faction 2. Also New game, of course, came out for the Xbox One, and of course that being grounded, which was heavily, you can tell, influenced by things such as uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which is a classic film. Also, uh, EA hints at buying Batman slash Mortal Kombat. Please, no, 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 no. I do not want to see Electronic Arts get their hands on Batman and Mortal Kombat. If people think DLC was bad already on Mortal Kombat, if EA gets it, it's going to be a nightmare. Also, uh, Kena Fighters, uh, a special new trailer drop for Kena Fighters Awaken 2020. Uh, CG trailer. It looks awesome. I especially love how Iori looks in the trailer. Also, Microsoft will discontinue Xbox Live Gold going into Xbox Series X. Not surprised. They're focused more obviously on their Game Pass. And that's no surprise. Uh, the last normal piece of headline besides some other stuff mentioned is... Uh, uh, EA is giving away free copies of a newer game, Rocket Arena. Not surprised because it's already on sale at GameStop for $9.99, $30 off. So with that said, also some other game trailers we got. We got a tr new trailer for uh, official announcement from Harada and the announcement for Season 4 coming to Mortal Kombat or for Tekken 7. And I'm not surprised one bit at all. I expected a season four for Tekken 7 because Tekken 7's been doing really good. And apparently it's supposed to have like improved uh, service and stuff for the online. Hopefully it means they changed over to rollback netcode, which is what all fighting games sh should be using is rollback. Like uh, Marvel Infinite, like uh, MK11, like... Uh, Skullgirls, or also games like Killer Instinct, all rollback netcode, which is why they run so well online. Also, we got a trailer from uh, Team Soul for announcement of, of course, new character officially confirmed with new stage, uh, new functions for. Uh, 2.20 update to uh, Soul Calibur 6, uh, where now you can fix it where the character's clothes won't be blown off and stuff, and I'm glad about that, because it destroys awesome looking custom costumes you do, and I'm glad that means I'll be able to fix it where I don't have to worry about the costumes being destroyed anymore. I am happy about that update. The new stage is looking cool, and of course, they showed gameplay, and you can hear audio stuff from, obviously... Her single player story, it's going to be done. I get a feeling it's going to be like probably about an hour long, like previous character, Hilda. But, uh, of course, confirmed, debuted originally in Soul Calibur 3. And, of course, Setska has been confirmed with gameplay and everything. I'm not digging the blonde hair on Setska. I like Setska better with the black hair, but whatever. Still, her design overall is cool, and I do like how she implements into game and stuff her special 
sword, which is connected to also a classic Japanese umbrella, which is cool, perfect for Setsuka. But that is just some of the stuff that we saw announced. But anyways, I'll see everyone next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. Also, they showed a trailer for two new characters officially confirmed for Guilty Gear Strive. So, with that said, I'll see everyone. Stay safe out there. See you next time.